Papa Dan Tiro and good afternoon, Chairman Cruz, the honorable members of this committee, our honorable Mayor of Rhode Island, our honorable Edward Atlick, Municipal Council members, most distinguished Chairman Okuku is present, uh, Chairman Nizawa, and the people of Rhode Island. For the record, my name is Ivan Merrick, Press Secretary for the Board of Mayor's Office, and this part representing the Office of the Governor in this hearing. I am here to introduce the Governor and Lieutenant Governor's nominee for the Commonwealth Economic Development Authority, Ms. Aubrey Magnolia Hoku, representing the island of Rhoda. A well-educated and highly accomplished public servant, Ms. Aubrey Hoku is a highly regarded professional here in the CNMI, with years of extensive experience within the public sector, working as a special assistant for programs and grants for the municipality of Rhoda under the Honorable Mayor Efren at Atlet, and an, an educator for both schools on CNMI and Guam. Her credentials makes her a viable candidate to once again serve on the seat of Board of Directors. The management of our economy is undoubtedly the most important priority of our Commonwealth and it has required a comprehensive community approach from the lowest common denominator of our village to our private sector partners. Given her experience, temperament, and good judgment, Ms. Hoka will work diligently to uphold the mission of the State of Board so that we can help diversify the economy and create more opportunities for our people in all three senatorial districts. Governor Torres placed his full trust and confidence in Ms. Ms. Hoku as a member of the Commonwealth Economic Development Authority. I know she stands ready to answer your questions and presence on what she has accomplished as a member of the board. We ask for expenditure approval. Thank you. Jesus, Mose, and Guliso. I recognize that uh, we are working at the last four hours. I speak with this man on um, the issue right now, as we have gone through in the past, about the work and the system. Honorable Chairman Francisco Cruz uh, and members of this body, Honorable Vice Chairman Senator Victor Hokup, Senate Floor Leader Honorable Senator Vinny Sablon, and our Senate President, the Honorable Jude Hoschneider. I'd also like to recognize the President of our Honorable Mayor, Jeff Matulik, our 18th Governor School Council Chairman, John, the Honorable Jonathan Mazama, and to all of those present here this afternoon. My name is Aubrey Mamonia Hokup, and I am once again Deeply humbled by my renomination to serve as a board member for the Commonwealth Economic Development Authority, or better known as CEDA. I would also like to thank our Honorable Governor Ralph Torres and Honorable Lieutenant Governor Arna Palacios for their continued confidence and trust in me, uh, as it has been an accolade to represent Rhoda and an honor to serve our beautiful Commonwealth. For those who may not be aware, the Commonwealth Economic Development Authority, or CEDA, has two divisions. The Banking Development Division, or DPD, serves the government and public sectors, while the Development Corporation Division, or DCD, engages in private sector activities. CEDA also administers the Qualifying Certificate Program, which, um, which is from the Investment and Sector Act of 2000. Uh, recently, the passing of House Bill Number 22-21, uh, Conversion to Public Law Number 22-01, on June 7, 2021, is a milestone for the Commonwealth Development Authority. CDA is now transitioning into Commonwealth Economic Development Authority, as Public Law 22-01 gave CEDA the power to refocus its vision of economic development. The legislature is considering House Bill 22-70, 
the Investment Incentive Act of 2021. This proposed legislation is a revamp of the Investment Incentive Act of 2000, which serves its time in providing incentives for new investment. House Bill 22-70 is restructuring the QC program of 2000 to meet the changing economic climate in the CNMI. With the support of the Board of Directors, Management and Staff, CETA and the, Nor uh, CETA and the Northern Marianas Housing Corporation have separate weights. As per Governor Ralph de Leon Guerrero Torres, he signed Executive Order 2020 and 2021 on September 24, 2020, allowing for both agencies to focus on their mandate separately. Since I've last been in front of you uh, in 2019, I would just like to briefly share the accomplishments that CETA has uh, given or has made from 2019 to 2021. The CETA Board of Directors are ready with a transformation of the new Economic Development Agency in the CETA mine and preparing for the passing of legislation on the modifications of the QC program. For previous years, CETA has made headways despite difficulties brought about by two damaging typhoons beginning fiscal year 2019 and the coronavirus outbreak beginning fiscal year 2020. Under the DCP program, the Board of Directors have provided loan payment deferral to both borrowers and judgment debtors impacted by Typhoon Mankud and Typhoon YouTube, and additional relief due to the coronavirus. Our collections were down. However, cumulative earnings of good years conveniently placed CETA in a stable financial position that the Board of Directors continue to deploy loans and even raise its loan ceiling. And gradually, under our new direct loan program, our loan amount has been raised to 450000 from 250000 this year, and from 150000 to 250000 last year, and from 75000 to 150000 in 2019. My colleagues and I have approved to amend the Development Corporation Division, or DCD, rules and regulations in its entirety. We are now conformed with all our current loan, uh, loan programs in terms of its review tools, our loan terms and conditions of the DCD micro loan, and the new direct loan programs. My colleagues and I have also approved the request of NMHC's one million line of credit for the initial administrative costs and planning expenses in the first year of the CDBGDR program. A total of 121,307 were dispersed as of 2020, and NMHC has now paid off this amount, and the line of credit is closed. Total loans during my second tenure in micro loan and direct loan program has been reached to 3 million, and under the state small business credit initiative program has been 2.13 million. In 2021 alone, for the island of Saipan, CETA approved six loan applications and dispersed 591,914 under the micro loan and direct loan program, and one approved loan of $1 million. For the island of Tinian, CETA approved three loan applications and dispersed $27,500 under the micro loan program. And for the island of Rhoda, CETA approved 17 applications and dispersed a total of $488,905 under the micro loan and direct loan program. So we are doing our mission, we are assisting our people in helping start up their businesses. Under the DVD program, the Board of Directors continue to work with the Commonwealth Courts Authority in its quest to float revenue bonds. Uh, talks were um, suspended last year, but have resumed recently with our CETA administration. The Board of Directors approved the CNMI's issuance of a 25 million bond to the Bank of Guam. It was closed mid-part mid of 2020. Proceeds of this bond were used to pay the government's obligation to the settlement fund for 2020. The CETA Board of Directors also approved the Commonwealth Utilities Corporation's request for deferment of its dividend payments to CETA. The deferral ended on September 30, 2020, and CUC is now paying its dividend payment due and quarter. Reference the declaration, referring to the declaration of a state of significant emergency in January of 2020, the governor invoked his authority to take all necessary measures to address the threats the CNMI faces, 
including all available resources of the CNMI government and its subdivisions. The Board of Directors approved to assist in the amount of $6 million and was fully remitted on April 22, 2020. And CEDA continues to provide additional funding or funding to all the three senatorial districts via our CIP bond interest program. Through wise investment of this interest, the bond float of 1986 has continued to earn interest for future CIPs. It assisted all the three senatorial districts in pushing their capital improvement projects over the years. Appropriations lies um, for the rest of the funds lies with the senatorial district legislatures. Our qualified certificate program. Uh, there are two current beneficiaries of this program. Their compliances are currently being reviewed. And then for consideration, our board is being introduced by a QC applicant who is looking to investing or producing solar energy and propose an expansion to other tourism-related projects. The total proposed investment is $6.47 million. CEDA also continues to work closely with the International Economic Development Council via its volunteer program. A volunteer came to the CNMI in 2019 and assisted government agencies in its recovery efforts after two typhoons hit the CNMI. One volunteer uh, submitted his analysis and recommendations on improving and advancing CEDA programs to revive the CNMI's economy. And lastly, this board of directors approved to hire an economic development manager to manage the economic development section of CEDA as we intend to meet the added responsibilities mandated by Public Law 22-01, the CEDA Act of 2021. So this list, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that I provide in honorable uh, members of this body are just some of the many accomplishments CEDA has achieved. Team Tim Fargo once said, leadership is service, not position, and we rise by lifting others. And with that said, I'd like to thank and give credit to the hardworking staff from CEDA for their continued services. Without their collaborative work ethic, their innovative ideas and patience, we would not have been able to complete the many different accomplishments our agency has achieved. I would also like to thank my colleagues for their partnership, their support, their understanding, and our ability to negotiate and to push forward the agenda and mission of our agency. I would also like to thank my family and friends for their never-ending love and support and my personal and professional ventures. It has truly been a great experience serving, and if given another opportunity, I promise to continue to be the amplified voice for not only my fellow people of Rhoda, but for the people of the Commonwealth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. for that report that you And before I recommend the members of the general public that are here in the gathering to present this morning, first I would like to recognize all the entities that are invited to participate. Let me uh, first recognize the Mayor of Warren, Mayor of the company. We wish you a very good evening. Please start, sir, before you receive a statement for the room. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, Zhao Spika Nakada Sivana Manali. We will be now recognizing the COVID 19 Kulan Haka local tourist. Manali Sita is a compassion. So, anyways, this is possible to stay under the Nano Say Effort in Manoniata, Mayor of Florida. I tell you that you, well, you've heard what she, um, the nominee uh, enumerates her accomplishments, what they're going to do, and you know, all these good things. So I'm just going to ask you guys to please, when you vote, please vote yes. Help me bring her back so that we can continue doing the success that she and her colleague has been doing for the people of Rona and the entire uh, city of so thank you very much for this opportunity and uh, giving me the uh, general public to comment on the poor for the But I'm pretty sure they're here for. So anyways, thank you. And uh, 
Mr. President, please respond. Advice for this committee, please respond. And chairman of the uh, Finance Committee, chairman of the EAGI, Mr. Frank, Honorable Frank Cruz, and of course, Honorable Dean Sabla. Thank you, uh, Mayor. I know on, on the days uh, we invited uh, the Executive Director, uh, I know that we have submitted a uh, letter in support of the appointee, but I can see that there's a number of family member of uh, Sina that is here. And a board member, if you wish to come up, please, sir, uh, you can come up and uh, deliver this one. A board member of the CIDA, and the police is staying there for a little bit. Thank you. I am a member of the Board of Directors for the Commonwealth Economic Development uh, Corporation. I am here today to lend support to my fellow colleague on the city, CEDA Board, is Aubrey Hoker, who has been renominated by Governor Ralph DeLeon Guerrero Torres and Lieutenant Governor Arnold I. Palacios to serve for another term on the board. I first met Chairwoman Aubrey on the day that I was confirmed to serve on the CEDA board by this very uh, committee back in July of this year. That day I was sworn in by the governor and shortly thereafter I had my first uh, CEDA board meeting. And uh, that's when I met uh, you know, the chairwoman. Prior to that, I had no idea of who Ms. Aubrey Hoko is. Today, in my hands, I have Aubrey's impressive resume. But I'm not going to talk about her impressive work history or experience. I am sure you all have complete knowledge about her excellent work background. However, I just want to say one thing, and that is I have always admired educators, and Aubrey is a shining example of the noblest profession in life. I'm really impressed with that as an educator. So my first impression of uh, Chair Chairwoman Aubrey after that first board meeting I, you know, I thought she's an intellectual with great leadership qualities. And, you know, mind you, I have not seen her resume yet. In fact, I just got the resume the other day. Uh, fast forward, I have had, you know, the privilege to work with her. I've seen her in action. And there's nothing else to say about her. I believe she has the abilities to perform her, her duties, and she does it in an efficient and very effective manner. Aubrey, during our deliberations, is focused and is always professional in her dealings with responsibilities as board chairwoman. There's no doubt in my mind that Aubrey will be an asset to any organization. So I kindly ask this August body to confirm Ms. Aubrey Hope to the seat of board without delay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members. Thank you, uh, 
Chairman and members of the committee, um, I'm Marie Coleman, and I'm here on behalf of the Commonwealth Economic Development Authority, uh, Mr. the Executive Director, Mr. Manny Saban, um, management and staff, and also the board. And I know that the uh, Mr. Saban has already given the testimony during the Senate session for both of the governor's nominees. So I'm just going to give a really brief recap of. of of what some of the statements that that letter contain. And again, just to reiterate the support for the, the appointment of um, our chairwoman, Aubrey M. Hoppo, to continue to represent the island of Rota and to continue with her eagerness to help our community and to find ways to promote local businesses and assist in the very, in the overall revitalization of the community. She serves here in the municipality of Rota as a special assistant for programs and grants under the direct supervision of the mayor of Rota. She has exemplary experience in and educational credentials, having taught in both the secondary and post-secondary levels um, in various studies. She also has commendable educational achievements in having a doctoral in the public administration, master's in teaching and public administration, and having successfully completed, completed the CNMI pre-law program with an emphasis on property law and contracts law, and also a graduate of arts and political science. Her education and work experience are valuable assets to our agency. She's also successfully obtained the F-1360 accredited investment fiduciary designation from back in 2017 and has since com continued as an AIF designee, which has earned her the credibility and distinction in the marketplace as a fiduciary specialist. Having that designation empowers her as a professional with the fiduciary knowledge and tools that are needed to serve our clients. This is one essential skill um, that we are very grateful that she possesses on the board of, as a board member of CEO. Um, she's also exhibited strong support for our small businesses and local entrepreneurs. She's made positive comments, presents fact-based arguments that have really impacted the decisions that the board has made. As a chairwoman and member of the CEO board of directors, she's practiced good governance and effective and efficient leadership. And besides just her functions on the CDA board, she's also been an active member in the communities here in Rota, which benefits all sectors of the community in helping to improve livelihood and well-being. As you all are aware, you know, the designation for CDA changed to CEDA, which greatly expanded our responsibilities at a very critical time now in CEDA my history. Uh, with Ms. Hopkins' leadership and experience, um, they're an important and critical part in this area of economic recovery and revitalization. Our board has taken, has taken on that task and has already commenced discussing those options. And she is committed to exploring new ideas and strategies and is willing to work together with other members of the board, CEDA management, and the administration. Again, having briefly summarized what was submitted to the committee. Again, we ask for the committee's support to confirm Ms. Hopkins to continue serving on the board of directors of the Commonwealth Economic Development Authority. Thank you. You want to go and see if you need some more, but just to add, Mons for the Salman, the OPOD, as a member of the loan team, you know, senior for the Salman, which is in Tritori, who are all 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 that should so be told to the senior for a great talent. Then, fair if you know, who you lucky, you know, you make a cost. A show out in a talk to the mothers and senior, my mother, I, you know, I believe what he gave me off of the money to the Adam Lena, the Lady Senior, the Athan Tangles, and the senior was a good and talking that he got the idea that he had a little bit of 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 a
Thank you, Mrs. Uh, Any um, other members of the CDAM? Okay, uh, the members of the Indian group to come. Any members of the Thank you. 
so we are, although it's on calendar, uh, giving an assurance that we will not rush until we make sure that we hear from our mayor and from you and from uh, the, the community, uh, especially the business community that, uh, or the would-be business um, community members here that, that can look into the matter to, to make it a, a workable um, based on the act that is what, what it's calling for and eventually your responsibility as the board of directors to, to first call that to land up. Um, just moving right ahead, uh, ma'am, um, maybe someone can, uh, uh, Marie can, if it's okay with the chairman, uh, one of the things that was brushed by, by my office, even through a phone call, is the, the annual percentage rate for loans. Uh, I believe right now um, it's, it's a fixed rate at 7% or 6%, not? Is it uh, elastic or? Yes, it varies based on your applicants. So we've, uh, and again, the recommendation part of the administration, we, we've come up with this fair system. Right, so any applications that come, they are, once they are assessed based on their liabilities and assets and the amount of um, you know, funding that they're able to, that they um, receive, they get correlates to uh, their interest rate. But our colleagues and I have pushed for, um, uh, in support of providing incentives or if our, our clients continue to pay faithfully, um, you know, they're, they're in obligation to see that, that their uh, interest rate will reduce. No, but no, no, the prevailing right now is, if you can we say 7% is the majority right now, you know, on an average? On an average. Okay. Uh, is that? Yes. Yeah. Is there, there a plan? What's the low that you guys have approved? Is it 5.5? 5 .5? So, okay. um, so, so you guys are monitoring that based on yes. the data? Yes. Um. And like we mentioned, we are in full support of uh, uh, creating a policy where if they pay faithfully to CDA, they their interest will uh, decrease. Okay, so the, the, does that apply to any kind of uh, yes. uh, business or is it is there a high risk or is it a seasonal, for example, agriculture is seasonal, you don't know when the storm is going to come and you don't know where it's going to be, or how does that work? So it's going to be applied to all our, our low, our, our micro, or not micro, our, um, our loans. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, sorry, ma'am, uh, the, the judge, it could be, I can't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, what we're trying to do, I guess, is, um, uh, this is a leading comment that I'm about to do, my next mm -hmm. statement is, and I think, I think, uh, you and I, uh, and everybody else in here agree that, um, with this pandemic situation where we don't know when the border is going to close, uh, we really need to be self-sustaining here at the CNMI. And I, I, I want to thank you for allowing uh, uh, your staff to work uh, with, with our offices to, to uh, move forward with some of the initiatives that we have uh, going in the CNMI. And, and I, I'm, a, I'm a strong believer of food sustainability initiative here in, in the CNMI. And I think uh, uh, your leadership and your agency would, would play a very key role here. Uh, and I'm thinking more like, I'm hoping that it's not going to be an issue for our supply here with all the backlog in Southern California ports and somewhere in the Asian country. Uh, that would be the day. So how do we do that uh, as, as, a, you know, as, as representatives, as, as community? stakeholders here, how do we do that? Are we going to cry fall and or are we going to come up with a solution? No. There's 50,000 people here in CNMI, more or less, and, and we need to, to address those in the end. Uh, some of these uh, unforeseen circumstances does happen. So I, I, do you just want to say something? Yes, um, I was just going to add that, you know, CEDA has come a long way, and, you know, creating the that policy, right, in correlation to the interest. But my colleagues and I can always revision, we're about flexibility. You know, CEDA is not a bank. We're here to help our people. And so, of course, we need to find a, a middle ground where we can balance 
uh, as long as we preserve and our future is to see that, and of course, helping our clients, uh, we can always bring this back to the table and uh, find better solutions to them. Okay. I know, I know you, uh, one last comment I'm going to make, but I need to put my glasses back on. All right. Um, on 2270, uh, one, one thing that I wanted to ask uh, if you can take a look at uh, this, there's, there's some terminologies that was used. Uh, one is targeted industry, which is, which is very, uh, very uh, ambitious, no? which is good. And then there's one on page three, line six. And uh, it specifically says for the purposes of defining economic loans, the municipalities of India and Rota will be separately categorized as their own respective loans. I believe uh, just reading this uh, is very plain, no? So we need to extrapolate more of what, what does that mean? Um, uh, also, uh, ma'am, uh, on page 4, line 13, it says again, provided that for economic development zones within Rota and India, Minimum capital investments, including public benefit contributions, will be no greater than 60% of baseline investment threshold published by the authority. Now, you know, what does that uh, I trust that, that you guys are going to, to, uh, to look into this. But the, the most uh, uh, problematic, in my, in my opinion, and, and, and the members of the Senate uh, tend to agree with this, is, is kind of a curveball. On page six, on line 19 to to uh, page seven, uh, line three, it says, and I quote: "Even within 90 days of receipt of all items required by section 50206, the CEDA board fails to end to either disapprove the application or recommend the application be granted, then the application short by the governor for this for this consideration." <laughs> Please look at that. You know, the chief executive and the is on the board for the city state. No? Uh, board Chair, uh, Board uh, Seman, I hope uh, you are <laughs> listening on to this too. And finally, uh, I like this uh, provision. Uh, line 8, I mean page 8 on line 5. This has always been an issue with, with all the developers here. Is that the CEDA shall be tasked with obtaining permitting authorization and associated land to develop the necessary pre-development approvals for the development. This is good because we're always uh, here that the developers are doing uh, I think the way I read it is the permit, no? It's always permit, permit, this, permit, that. So, so uh, this QC amendment is very critical for the progression of and moving forward no, with, with our, uh, our CMI. And I trust that uh, uh, your leadership and your, your excessive knowledge and, and your business acumen no, you can assist in this process forward. So please work with us. Again, we will not. Uh, Rush in this legislation as we want to hear the concerns of the mayor and the U.S. Department for CEDA and the GCA. So, with that, Mr. Chairman and members, I yield my time and thank you for allowing me uh, to make some comments. This is what I'm Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and then, uh, Mayor, thank you again for giving the community the opportunity to use this uh, conference room to turn out this ball. And I'd like also to extend our appreciation to the new chairman of the Municipal Council for being here to participate in this undertaking in uh, conducting public hearing as you will be experiencing this to the future. And it will be a good experience for you to uh, join us in, in this respect. Again, thank you for also I'd like to express thank you and appreciation for Sid uh, Simon for making your way to Roland to uh, uh, witness the this public hearing to one of your colleagues. And of course to Marie, 
for being very uh, supportive to the agency that we work with and to other uh, members of this uh, community, uh, Director Tony Kirigua and former Councilman uh, Chairman Nanzor Sopo and to all of you that are present this afternoon. Um, so I want to question your ability to undertake the critical and crucial responsibility that this CEDA agency will be undertaking moving forward, most particularly with a legislation that will add on more strenuous but more comprehensive and fruitful undertaking to ensure that CEDA board as it is introduced and becomes law, will work toward our, our citizens and the city mind. With your ability to move forward with your colleagues, we, I am very confident from my standpoint that uh, this challenge is, is very uh, uh, affordable and uh, uh, it will move forward with you representing the island of Rona and was his other board members in Okamawa. More especially, I quote you with a quotation that you use from him, uh, what's his name? Let me check that. Uh, yeah, okay, from uh, a quotation that you from my team partner, which this committee shares that same, that leadership is service, not position. I really love that. And I'd like to add on more with that uh, <coughs> uh, direction that a quotation from one that uh, the ultimate measure of a man or woman is not where he see stands. In a moment of comfort and convenience, but where he or she stands in the moment of challenge and controversy. So with this, we can be sitting on a position where we want to sit, you know, and to be complacent and not do anything. Because you have the opportunity to enjoy the appointment, whether or not going to work or, 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 or not. But the position that you may mention in leadership as a service is that that is where I'm leading that you agree, you accept your reappointment. Correct? Now, in, 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 in the new legislation that uh, the legislature will consider, again, is a great responsibility that will really enhance and most particularly with the President McMansion about the new concept of a targeted industry that you see that uh, Board of Directors will be looking to introduce and how to assist the targeted industry to really come and put their seabeds on, on the island is by virtue of having the CDA staff or the board members securing the most complex uh, challenge of investment opportunity from offset investment that we will not frustrate their interest in the Commonwealth and most particular concern for a depressed investment in our Commonwealth, in our Commonwealth, which is growth that has been. And in, in a way, to really help for this uh, senatorial is we need to seriously introduce also interested investors to look into a depressed municipality to ensure that they cultivate no group and uh, a growth of business opportunity by leveraging a more 
uh, was there a more opportunity for when applying for QC? And maybe that can enhance the interest uh, to either pick Rhoda or Tinian or Saipan, but if an incentive is a better place for the press municipality with a business that they have, not, not to make mention that it requires a bigger population to ensure that you are profitable, but a business that can go external and make revenue for themselves as well as for the couple. So with the idea of uh, CEDA to assist in the formulation of acquiring all these local permits, I, I am very confident that the Investment investors of interest looking in will definitely move forward to, to pick the cinema to be their uh, uh, investment home because the fact that they are they, they have the necessary assistance from a corporation that works with economic development you know, and, and, and in that way we will see the the big change of uh, interest again to return to the Commonwealth. And I hope that uh, your, your, your colleagues will also consider this idea to be the most viable to revitalize really uh, business opportunity in a sense that are not present at this point in time. But it will be very profitable for the uh, Commonwealth as well as for the business you know, owner that anticipate the business that he wants to to uh, uh, put in place. And I, I hope that in the future, if the board uh, members uh, will provide the legislature, the uh, presiding officer of the legislature, any targeted business opportunity that see that are trying to entice coming in and it will also help the legislator to aggressively work on any legislation to put more easy access you know for, for uh, more opportunity from also. now CDA at, at this present time do the CDA continue to lend money to our local uh, borrowed uh, directly or CDA continues to undertake the, the role of rejecting an applicant and sending the applicant to the bank first and CDA will then, after the bank agrees, so CDA will guarantee the loan to the bank. Well, that's for the state small development. They will have to go to the bank to get approval for the uh, small state development uh, loan. But for the direct loan loan, uh, depending on the amount that they are looking to loan, I believe up to 25000 just goes directly to Director Savan uh, and his management for approval. But anything above um, that would have to go to the board. And no, they directly come. And I, I, I really highlighted the amount of loans that we have given out to showcase to you our leaders that uh, CEDA has really been aggressive in uh, attracting and uh, encouraging our local people to take loans and open because we our people have great talents and abilities, great ideas. And we want to provide an option for them to channel uh, and get financial assistance to be able to make that dream again. Yeah, the reason why I ask that because today, as we witness the young generation coming together in group or a self privacy wanting to develop or open business opportunity, you know. But if CDA at back then is not receptive to really provide, you know, the opportunity for a direct loan uh, and not hold hostage the applicant of not releasing the whole loan package and to put and to ration the the amount of operation that that is something that impede you know the the uh, the process of, of moving forward with what you want to accomplish. So I want to just find out today is the, 
then CEA, uh, or now CDAC, continue to uh, do the same uh, requirement or process that uh, if I seek here a loan that I will not, my loan will not be disbursed 100% and they will hold the parcel of it for my operation? So one of the, just recently, I believe, um, with our last uh, board uh, meeting, I do know we want to promote financial literacy and management. And we want to assist our borrowers because sometimes when, you know, just uh, based on conversations that when people have uh, too much money, they purposely spend it and not really on the intended amount. And so I think with part of the application to submit to CBA is their, their plan on how to uh, spend. Um, I do know that that was not a requirement, but I, I have um, just to share with you that that is the direction of the board to promote financial management and literacy in terms of how to uh, appropriately um, spend the money, especially where it's intended. So, uh, tell me give an example. Uh, let's say for a fishing uh, loan. Okay. Uh, the Simmons loan. Does uh, CDA continue to provide that uh, loan to the community? Yes, we provide it to all the uh, uh, various uh, items that we are eligible for loans. And what is the maximum uh, a loan uh, that the uh, cement will come forth to borrow to, let's say, procure a boat and what? You can loan up to four hundred and fifty thousand okay. dollars. We just recently uh, increased that because there has been a large interest, and a lot of our borrowers, you know, they would like to raise the amount that they borrow. Uh, of course, you know, we want to be sure that we are able to give out loans to just not one individual, and so we have um, increased slowly, and that's why I mentioned earlier from seventy-five thousand to one fifty to two fifty to now four fifty. To develop opportunities for our people to seek their, you know, larger dreams of either owning a boat or opening a, a manufacturing company or whatnot. So whatever uh, it is that they bring to the board, we help address and see how we can assist. So as we speak today, the executive director can directly approve twenty-five thousand yes, million without, without board the action. Yes. Without board action. Yes. As the same with farming uh, applicants. 25,000. The limit for the executive director to approve yes. in the absence of board no. So, assuming that a, an applicant intends to borrow 100,000 for whatever reason, the back then CDA would refer this applicant to. Is that being done today? They just uh, would have to, I, I believe, remove that requirement of the denial from the bank. And, uh, and in the event that uh, this, this, this uh, uh, concern that I'm raising out is coming from people mm -hmm. outside of telling me that uh, if, they, if they apply, if he or she apply in the CDA, that they will refer them to the bank, and the and the bank will then negotiate with the CDA so that, you know, for the approval and having CDA to guarantee the loan. So that's referring to the state uh, small development business development loan. So that's a different program together. Okay, so in the event that that is continued to be you know to be the the, the requirement, how much? How much are we paying the bank to Guam or any bank for doing the African process? So specifically, I'm not, um, I'm not uh, confident as to the exact amount of how much we're paying the bank. But I do know with that because the guidelines are federal. That's a, that's a separate program, uh, different from our direct loan. Direct loan is they don't have to they they steer from the bank altogether. But if they're applying through that state small development, they have to be approved from the bank. I believe CNMI has two banks that are under, are approved uh, for this program, including Bank of Guam and City Trust. So if they want to avail of that, where uh, 
guarantee that you uh, can guarantee some funds from that loan, it would have to be through those banks. But outside of that, uh, to promote businesses, that's why we have increased our, uh, our direct loans so that our uh, people can avoid going through that. So now, uh, you know, that is very clear now that uh, I think the, what they were telling you was their experience back then, so that is no longer no, no. the issue no, no. today. No, no, no. So, does the uh, board ever meet to discuss what targeted industry are we looking into in the so since the idea or the um, conversation of the, uh, I guess changes to CEDA, CBA, to get to CEDA, our board has mentioned it, but we have, uh, we want to draft a plan, but we need to fill out our economic development uh, manager position. Now this person, we have already begun to advertise to fill in this position. We definitely want to meet the needs of of the um, past law, and um, by doing that, we want to hire an expert uh, who can bring in his or her credentials into CD to help us, I guess, to either uh, recommend to amend our policies or to adopt specific policies to be more cre uh, creative and flexible. Then that's something our CEDA is uh, board is open to do. I can assure this body that my colleagues are the voices of their respective, uh, you know, uh, islands. And together, especially with our hardworking senior management and staff, we really are open to challenges. We face them, we don't steer away from them, and it's just about not our sitting down and, not, and um, hearing each other's opinions and um, working with our managers to find solutions. Because we have addressed many solutions, uh, many challenges in the past, and we were able to solve through them. And so I'm confident that we'll be able to do the same with this. Thank you. I know, I know that. Uh... Uh, it is, this is a challenge, but uh, knowing the, the staff with the CIDA, the new uh, name for CIDA, I am very confident that with the board leadership and the most able staff, uh, well, I can rest assured that it will meet the expectation of this proposed legislation that we are looking into to consider. But we would really appreciate a feedback, uh, the impact of, of, of this legislation and the impact of uh, renaming CDA to Commonwealth Economic Development. And in that way, we can be funded in, 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 in creating more opportunity that requires legislative consent. Uh, but if the board members sway away or shy away from discussing these uh, ideas with uh, the leadership of the legislature, then sometimes you know it's going to take time to to move forward. And one one of my greatest recommendation uh, if and when 22 to 70 is passed, that uh, see them will have to engage with all the permanent agency and discuss the vision of what CEDA is trying to accomplish in any targeted investment coming into the Commonwealth as a concept investment. And don't also forget our local entrepreneurs that wants to avail opportunity with your business. So are you back? Are you Mr. Chairman for now? Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair. Now I would like to recommend the board of the Senate, Senator Mr. Sarbon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good afternoon to all that are present here today in the uh, Mayor's Conference Room. Um, thank you to the Mayor and your staff, um, also to the Chairman of the 18RC and the members for um, always welcoming us, and most importantly to the beautiful people of Florida, the wonderful people. I was just here uh, last week during your San Francisco Dior Fiesta. I was with my wife and uh, 
we had a wonderful time. Um, I bet it was a wonderful economic time for, for Rhoda. And I uh, made a joke that um, she knew that I was coming back this week, so I said, why don't I just stay for the rest of the days? And she said, well, why don't you just come with me to the airport and then come back the next week? So anyways, here I am again. Um, always nice to visit um, uh, Rhoda. Uh, thank you also to um, the SEDA team, uh, board member Sandman and uh, uh, Mrs. Coleman uh, for, for being here, and to everyone that is um, watching as we're being recorded. Um, and to you, Ms. Hopkoga, thank you for being here and for accepting the, the renomination from Governor Torres and Lieutenant, Lieutenant Governor Palacios. I know that the board could uh, continue to use your, your, your valued experience and um, um, education and just your your um, positions and, and opinions and ideas um, in the board. So, um, in addition to your very impressive um, resume that we have in front of us, um, your moving opening testimony um, was a clear indi indication um, that spelled out the success of CEDA um, board members and, and the leadership and wonderful staff. It also spelled out the direction we need to strive for to sustain our commonwealth's economy, right? Uh, so you answered many of the questions in your opening statement. Um, and, you know, it's very uh, important to know that um, the CEDA mission and our economy is really um, what we need to sustain our, our, our commonwealth, right? So, you know, part of the mission is to provide appropriate funding and technical assistance to facilitate the startup <coughs> or expansion of private or public enterprise for their success. And I'm glad that there's a lot of good work that's being done on the board and in the CEDA office um, um, to reach that success, right? And to sustain that success. And that, that's the hardest part, is to keep that success. Um, but we, there's, there's, there's so much going on. Um, you know, there are other members um, and uh, other board members for, for CEDA, and I always kind of um, uh, said there's, there's so much going on in the CNMI and the world around us, right? It's very important to accomplish that. Um, we are in a time that we've never been in before. We are in a time that um, um, is, is really just um, uh, unknown to, you know, to us, right? Um, and it's with the, the, our, our, our pandemic right now, you know, in the COVID-19 pandemic. So we really have to make... Um, you know, really have to look at our decisions and adjust and restructure what we initially, you know, put forth in the books and how we wanted to drive our our economy. Um, these that is one of the main factors that has kind of changed it. And that's we, as leaders, we all have to kind of readjust and really make those decisions. Um, I'm acknowledging the factors, right? And I always um, list these factors. When we're in the hearings, not only the COVID 19 um, pandemic, but um, that has also affected the population, right? We have an evolving population. Um, we're going to rely on our new census data to, you know, to drive decision making, right? Um, we have evolving markets as well. We have now, um, when we think of economics, um, we think of a store that's right down the road or a hardware. Um, or a department store, but right now we compete with uh, uh, with Amazon and you know uh, uh, other online online stores that, that really really affects um, local entrepreneurship and local economic activity, right? and especially in in the area of taxes. Um, so these are all, all factors. We, um, we have a good economic position right now with ARPA. C are um, EDA and other federal grants and sure see that as you know in the front row of all of that and we're taking advantage of that right um, but uh, we want to also be prepared for when that um, is, is, is not there you know so we have to make these decisions now um, we have industry challenges right we have the tourist arrivals right now um, I always uh, say that we are our own tourists and you know we're gonna have to um, support each other, right? And that's what that with that makes it, it makes the, the local entrepreneurship important. Um, we need to drive that up. We are our own investors, right? 
it's, it's, it's a harder time to um, entice investors right now because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So um, these are our, our, our factors. There's so many, there's federal mandates, there's labor workforce challenges, there's the military, um, there's geopolitical issues such as trade wars, right? Um, and these are things that we all have to kind of um, really acknowledge and recognize and keep that, you know, and we, a lot of times we can kind of stay kind of in our bubble here in the CNMI, but um, these outside forces and outside um, uh, factors really, really affect the, the, the decision that we have to make right now. So, we, you know, we have, I don't know if you've heard of Trans-Pacific Trade Partnerships agreements, right? These are agreements between countries, China, the United States, and other jurisdictions that provide trade within, um, within the trade zones, right? And that affects us very, very um, uh, significantly. Um, so these, these are some of the things that I um, kind of look at on a daily basis and, and, and make sure that, you know, we're, we're really um, acknowledging that. Um, we have, again, temporary federal assistance. You know, the stimulus was here. We had PUA, FPUC, and, and, and all the other um, uh, financial assistance, temporary financial assistance that was brought to us from the pandemic and from um, all the, the natural disasters that came to us. But um, even if they were unfortunate, they drove economic activity up, right? numbers started looking, looking good and um, a lot of us, I, I really, a lot of us like to call it a blessing in disguise, but I, I think we should um, take it as a lesson in disguise so that we can prepare for something like that to happen so that we, we, we can be, be ready right, in, in the future. So um, these are a lot of the things that are, are going on um, around us and I think um, as leaders we do, you know, we're we're all in this together, right? We have to acknowledge those things. Um, the ongoing programs that I know the, um, the, the Senate President and uh, uh, former President Hope Cook spoke of House Bill 22 70, uh, we're really dissecting that right now in the Senate. Um, and there's a lot of programs that, that um, are kind of indirectly um, correlated to that, right? Um, we have um, OPD. Right, on the Office of Planning and Development, we have the Office of Grants Management, Department of Commerce, the Governor's Economic Council, the Chamber of Commerce, and other, even just other um, um, nonprofit entities that deal with economic activity or economics in general. So we have to kind of embrace that, embrace those programs and those organizations as well when we make the decisions as a government to ensure that there's some harmony in between the uh, uh, those 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 groups, right? So I just I just you know wanted to state that, and I, I, I always um, I always mention those factors when when I speak because it's very very important. We cannot forget about them. That's what drives the decision making when we're looking at um, economics, and I've learned this through the through the years. Um, so I'm just going to touch a little bit on Hospital Number Twenty Two S Seventy. Um, I know the President and Senator Hoku have uh, touched on, on a, a lot in detail, but um, there's one portion there that I'd like the board to really um, uh, look at and consider, and we're looking at it as well as we dissect, and it's in, in reference to the economic, de uh, economic development zone. Okay, so when that, uh, when this bill gets forward, we're, uh, it gets through, and we're excited to, um, you know, to push through and restructure uh, the economics and how CEDA will, will market these um, investors to come in. Um, please consider when you identify the economic development zones, please consider the um, three documents right now that I can think of is um, the DPL land use plan, um, the Garrett revitalization plan, which is for, of course, the third senatorial district, um, and any other plans for here and in Tinian. Um, and then most importantly, the zoning law. Now, those are three documents that must be considered when you identify the economic development zones because we want them to work harmoniously. Um, and, most is, and, and, and the one that stands out um, the most is the zoning law because that's statute. So um, we're, we always have to make sure that we're within that, um, uh, within the allowances of those, those statutes. 
Um, when you come up with the economic development zones and you find that you're at a barrier with the, 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 the current zoning law, and there's no, the zoning law is only for Saipan, right? Because um, uh, only in Saipan uh, we, we, we have uh, zoning regulations. Um, you know, we can, we, we can make adjustments to the zoning law. If, if, if the board sees the need that um, a specific zoning area needs to be opened up for mixed commercial or, um, you know, in, it, it needs to expand the industrial area, um, reach out to the delegation and we can, we can make those um, adjustments, right, um, uh, through your recommendations as, as, as the board. Um, I have a, a, um, a question, and this is on, um, on borrowing, uh, borrowing right, the small loans and the micro loans. A small business, um, and I, I was just wondering that when when senior receives applications for these micro or small loans, um, especially for our local small businesses or residents, um, do we see like poor credit ratings as a barrier to or a, a challenge for applicants to qualify? Do we see a lot of that um, or in, in applications for small loans? So I know that um, part of the assessment is their. Um, Credit, right, but it does not automatically reject them. There are other factors that can be considered that will um, recommend for them to be approved or not. Like I said earlier, you know, um, CEDA, we do support small businesses, but our fiduciary is to CEDA. And one of the things, the practices that we're trying to stray away from is, you know, many, many years ago, CEDA has um, given, or CEDA has issued loans to people who shouldn't have received loans. And, you know, we want to make sure that um, because our fiduciary is to see that, that we're able to um, ensure that our applicants can can pay back because we want to sustain the, uh, the program so that we can continue to give up the future of our applicants. But it's not the only factor that we're trying Thank you. And I was just wondering, um, you did mention that um, this desire of the board and then see that to promote um, or we probably have been promoting um, financial literacy so that you know our, our citizens and our residents can make more responsible um, uh, fiscal decisions right especially at home um, um, in order to you know to, to, to live comfortably and to improve the quality of life of their families and themselves um, I have this, this idea recommendation maybe we can also look into um, maybe assisting and seeing how we can give them advice to repair our credit ratings. Um, I see that and I, 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 I've spoken to a lot of people and believe it or not, um, uh, we, I, I've had people walk into my office and ask me to co-sign on loans. And, um, you know, I've, I've, of course I've never did it because I have to be responsible myself fiscally, but I, I don't just turn them away, I try to kind of help them and, and look into how um, for them to fix their, their credit ratings and stuff like that. Um, our, our, our young entrepreneurs and our, our young um, um, uh, business-minded people right now, are a lot of them are, are just newly freshly out of college and you know that, I know that, and, and of course um, being successfully out of college comes with a lot of student debt and student loan. And believe it or not, I'm still paying off my student loan. Now. I, I, you know, I've went through a, a wave of just um, not being able to pay it, and then paying it, and then you know, and then being as students and as, as um, um, former college students, we all know that. I know that it's everyone's going through it. Um, and when we are unable to pay college loans, it it, it really dents our credit score, right? But of course we have to choose whether to buy food, pay for our car, pay for our home mortgage, and you know, which to kind of give up. And a lot of times our, our, our people, they kind of put the student loan on the side and they take care of that, and then they kind of try to come, come and catch up. But then it affects their, their credit score, and then they go to the bank and they're not able to tomorrow. So um, maybe, maybe a way to kind of give some advice to Borrowers have to kind of look at how to repair. I know there's programs that you have to pay. You know, um, okay, we'll pay for your. You know, you want a credit score of 800? What's your credit score? 500? We'll pay. You know, and we'll get you up to you know to, to, to par. But um, I think this is one of the challenges that our, our, our people have. But um, I'm comforted by um, just 
your opening testimony and, and, and the work that CETA has been doing, um, you know, the efforts and energy that CETA has been putting out. I'm excited to have you gone and again for the, the position of uh, our. Not yet. We're still kind of. We're still. Uh, we're still advertising. We're still advertising. Okay. So I'm, I'm excited about that. We are. Yeah, I'm excited about that. So um, uh, please, when you get that person, can you bring them up to the list just so we can meet meet her and then uh, uh, kind of share and share ideas. But I don't have any other questions for you. Um, I just um, uh, wish you the best, and I, I, I hope that um, uh, moving forward, um, especially as the chairwoman, that um, the board and Siva never forgets to acknowledge the factors. Very, very important. I mean, it's it's just. I cannot say it enough, um, and I think that's that's what we've been doing, uh, is acknowledging what's what's going on around us, and then also to prepare, let's prepare ourselves for when uh, we don't have the temporary federal assistance anymore. Right? Um, I know our people have been very, um, they've been very um, expectant, right? And they they've been very dependent on it, and we want to make sure that uh, they they kind of learn how to move forward and, and make these good fight, uh, you know, fiscal decisions and uh, financial decisions. But um, moving forward, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll all do our part, you know, uh, see it as a very important entity in our government. And, uh, you know, you guys are, are, are the, the experts in, in, in the economy. I mean, just listening to um, Director Sablan, I like listening to him because he has a lot of very, very good wisdom and experience and you know he was he was there before he's seen this commonwealth at its at its worst time going to its best time and then down to its worst time so he knows what needs to be done and, 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 and we have to learn from that um, so that we can take it to the next 10 20 30 years to sustain our economy and, um, and really just um, uh, sustain the quality of life for people so um, i wish you luck Aubrey, and um, i know that you will bring good things and you continue good things to see that and most importantly, you're going to continue good things for the people on the island of Rhoda and see the minds of me. So good luck and thank you again for accepting the nomination. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for your information, Mr. Chairman. Again, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And before, this is going to be my last NOAA statement, NOAA outbreak that I, before I forget, uh, you know, with the concept of CEDA, trying to entice an investment on authority as you listen. Uh, maybe I'd like to ask you, and it's good that uh, your colleague is here, she is Mr. C7, and she, uh, one of your hardworking staff, she Marie. Uh, looking to uh, this free trade zone, most particularly for rural people, and try to meet with uh, DPL, how can, how can they assign or transfer the authority to the municipality for engaging, you know, this uh, targeted industry business opportunity? I know that they went to court because the law provided the authority to the mayor uh, for giving the municipality the future zone, no land, but I think uh, the court will rob that. Uh, only DPL can sign. So maybe you do look to that one and, and let's reactivate that uh, uh, free, free trade zone, uh, especially here. It's going to be, uh, uh, see that's going to be working mostly with government land, not for, for this investment. And let's see how can CEDA and public land work this out to. Uh, provide uh, authorization or, or, or the consent to the senatorial uh, uh, municipality to engage into the business with the investment. Yeah. I, I just want to bring that up before I forget, because the court, that's the ruling of the court, so maybe with, with the new vision of CEDA, we'll work harmoniously with the deal. Uh, and if, if our system is required, then let us know so we can be part of the meeting. Okay. Now you back, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.
Jesus and of his identity and of the king. Thank you so much, sir. The reader, beautiful discussion that needs to be raised and because of the our situation that we have right now and the pandemic. I wasn't going to call services, but let's just continue on and we'll just have to do this probably. In, in regards to the direct loan, I would like to extend appreciation and gratitude for the school and what they asked in the past that can see the end at the time they see the end. Can they do another program so that our community can be able to understand, to simply understand the, and be guided into the, uh, the dialogue? So, so many questions that have uh, been raised by, by our, uh, our constituents in regards to when the first uh, uh, contest has ended by a thousand, and we have been through the hard work in Gordon Valley, and thank you, uh, Gordon Director for, uh, and the Secretary Director for allowing uh, your staff to go around the evening and meet with the site and to do it, uh, and our wish to, you know, to simplify the, the, uh, this dialogue for what to work with, so that we can be able to adapt to the program. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, I mentioned it's I kind of rush to uh, your hard working uh, department uh, to to try and revive our our economy, our economic growth. And I, I, I ask that you, you you work with your your city members and, uh, and if there's any other for example any other agency that requires for that the government to proceed forward. I ask that you be also uh, reaching out for, for those departments to, to help the, the developers to continue moving forward. Otherwise, even if you're doing your the best you can in the department and the other agency are just feeling idle, you will not have it. So I think in order for for their economic work is to be working together on our own agency that are that I would give that, uh, you know, uh, uh, areas that go more far forward. So I, I ask that you to work with the other agency as well. You can know that it's not, it's not part of your, your your job is to, you know, to, to tell them. But um, I guess uh, in order for, for the government to proceed forward is to work together so that it will not, uh, you know, stall that, that development. Because there's, there's a lot in the past that that for them, time, time, no, time is of the essence for them to, to move the body forward. And we don't know whether or not it will be, if the, that the body will need to stay. But one of the fact that we're in this pandemic, uh, that is causing us uh, so much uh, hardship in our daily life in for uh, investors. So uh, in order for us to not only do an executive program in QC, but also a, a partnership or an agency to, to assist them. I don't, I'm not sure how many of our businesses that are closing down because of the pandemic. But we continue to reach out to them to continue, you know, to assist them in how they can provide their, you know, their, their businesses with what they see that. I'm pretty sure that they will not, they will consider staying back as I've seen some business that are closing down because of that the but we continue to reach out and assist them. I'm pretty sure that they will have a second time of moving their business all the time. Because we really all understand the situation and we want to continue the you know the goal and for and for that's water and the goal and the end we we have to have a a contingency plan that not only that we Inviting investors to come in with the sector program in QC for a plan, a whole plan that is uh, not, not materialized, the small business will continue to generate revenue for our company. So I uh, you know I'm looking at it and I'm considering having a, uh, a formal plan for, for the company under the CEDA department. I don't have any, any questions. I heard testimony from supporters from this community and from, from uh, your colleague and members of the 
really moving on a great uh, job in, in, in making sure that the department move forward on the process uh, our businesses and members of the community in a very new way to the problem that we have. So with that, I thank you for your patience and I would like to know what the members wish to do. At this time, all public comments are all there. Let the record there that there also written testimonies submitted from immigrant support of the appointee for this committee and will be included in the Senate Standing Committee Recommendation Report along with the, with the four testimonies that I received today to be forwarded to for the full side members in consideration for confirmation or rejection. And before we adjourn, I would like to stand on behalf of the members of this standing committee our sincere appreciation and gratitude to Governor Torres and President Governor Palacios' representative, Mr. Ivan Merrick, the appointee, Ms. Aubrey M. Koku, uh, Mayor Kakali, for giving us the opportunity to utilize this and most especially the members of the general public for your participation and involvement during this important public hearing process. And we certainly hope that we continue this dialogue of communication with the non-director officials and the public to keep their abreast and informed of our current and future Senate hearings ahead that relates to public best interest. Please conclude this public hearing for today. Do I hear a motion for you? There's a motion for adjournment and was seconded. All favor the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed, say nay. Motion carries. This public hearing is now in. Thank you.